Hey, what's up everybody? This is Todd from Your Fishing Adventure. This is going to be a quick video about portable depth finders. Now, why would you want one of these? Uh, maybe you have a fishing kayak like this one, but you don't feel like wiring the transponder or having a marine battery. Or maybe you have a kayak like my other one from Walmart that was 180 bucks, and you want to make it into a fishing kayak. There's a really simple solution for this. There are a variety of depth finders out there. Some are as cheap as 40 bucks. Lucky makes a few that you can see on Amazon. So I tried using the Lucky brand at one point, but the antenna was really cheaply made and broke. Uh, the one that has really lasted for me is this fish finder one. It's only about 80 bucks. And let me go ahead and just turn it on right now. It's great at showing the depth. It'll also show you drop-offs. I also have a video about jigging techniques, jigging secrets, where I just find drop-offs. So this fish finder is great for that. And I also fish over artificial structures called porcupine cribs, and this depth finder is perfect for that. I've done other videos about that. I'll put a link below. Another thing that I look for when I'm fishing is changes in water temperatures. I did a video about that when I was fishing in Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia, and all I did was go along the shoreline and try to find areas where warmer water was coming into the waterway. This depth finder was perfect for that. You can see here there's a little bit of a glare, but it shows the temperature of the water perfectly and accurately. The other great thing about this depth finder is it's extremely portable. It's lightweight, and the transponder is wireless. You can see it right there floating. I have it attached to the kayak using this string. You could use fishing line, whatever you want. I'd use a fishing pole holder right here, and I jerry-rigged this with a piece of wood to keep this out away from the kayak so it doesn't bump into it, and also so I can set it on top of the fishing pole holder when I'm not using it. This fishing pole holder, by the way, can be added to any kayak. There's just two screws, and you can pop it on or off depending on when you use it. All right, now back to the transponder. This thing is really easy to clean. All transponders get dirty eventually. This one with just a toothbrush and some hand sanitizer I've noticed works the best to clean it off. I'll talk about the negatives with this, but talking about some more of the positives too, this is also really easy to charge. Charging the depth finder itself is simple. It charges with a USB. This thing will last about a half day on one charge. It will not last the entire day. So what I do is I bring a portable charger. I make sure that the charger has multiple ports. You can use one port for your iPhone, one port for this guy and the transponder has its own separate port for charging it charges the same way it comes with cables to plug this into a usb and you could charge this on the water the transponder interestingly lasts an entire day so one charge will do it for this one if you're on a multiple day trip though you could also plug this one into your portable battery these both charge really quickly this will get fully charged off of an external battery within about a half hour I don't even worry about charging the fish finder. I just keep it plugged into the external battery. All right, those are some of the positives. And along with the low price of only around 80 bucks, that's pretty much why this is my go-to depth finder. Okay, let's talk about the negatives. One of the negatives is if you get even one drop of water on this screen, it affects the functionality. This thing is not good around water, interestingly, even though you use it on a boat, right? But there is a case that you can get for around 10 to $12. It's this one. I always have it in this case. The only reason it's out of this case right now is literally just to show you what this depth finder is. When it's in the case, it works perfectly. There's no issues. It won't show you the temperature below the surface. It will not show you the thermocline. I did a separate video on finding the thermocline. I'll put a link to that below. But it is only 80 bucks. You really can't expect it to do a whole lot more than that. The other negative, even though it's called a fish finder, it's not really good at finding fish. Um, it beeps at pretty much anything. If you go over a log or a stump and you can see it below, it'll still tell you it's a fish. It'll show you a picture of a fish, but that's still not a bad thing because a log or a stump or something like that is still bottom structure that you could use to find fish. So I really don't use this to show me pictures of fish. And finally, the last negative about this thing is the sound. It has no volume. So every time it detects a so-called fish, Fish, or when you turn it on it makes the exact same sound which is that one and you cannot change the volume of it it's a little bit better in the case though it's not quite as loud and after I already find the bottom structure that I'm looking for I'll just shut it off completely that's the one fix for it but otherwise that's not a really huge negative if you liked please click on the like and as always please become a subscriber if you're so inclined and otherwise I will see you on the next one thanks so much for watching everybody